Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. One of the most important lists in QuickBooks is the chart of accounts. You can open this list by selecting Lists, then Chart of Accounts from the menu bar. The chart of accounts lists all of the accounts within your company file. These accounts track all incoming and outgoing money and tell you how much you currently own and owe. When you set up your business in QuickBooks, you get a default list of accounts. Once that has been done, you will probably need to make some changes. You can add, edit, inactivate, delete, and rename accounts in this list. Generally, you can perform any of these tasks by first selecting the account within the chart of accounts that you want to change. Then click the Account button in the lower left corner of the Chart of Accounts window and select the desired command to perform from the pop-up menu that appears. Conveniently, in any of the lists that you can open by choosing the list command in the menu bar, you can rely on being able to click the button in the lower left corner of the list window to perform the basic list-related tasks. The button is always named the same thing as the list within which it appears. For example, the Account button is the one to click to perform list management in the Chart of Accounts window, the Item button is the one to click when using the item list, and so on. To illustrate, assume that you wanted to add a new savings account into your Chart of Accounts. To add a new account, select Lists, then choose Chart of Accounts from the menu bar, or press Ctrl plus A on your keyboard to open the list. Next, click the Account button in the lower left corner of the Chart of Accounts window and choose the New command from the pop-up menu that appears. This opens the Add New Account, Choose Account Type window, where you enter the new account information. First, select the Account Type from the Account Options shown. Technically, a savings account is an asset. However, in QuickBooks, when working with asset accounts that have a cash basis, like checking, savings, petty cash, and others, you will want to assign the account as a bank account type to note its cash nature and be able to use it more easily within transaction windows. After selecting the desired account type, click the Continue button to move to the next screen. You will then see the Add New Account window. Note that when you selected the account type on the previous screen and then clicked the Continue button, all it really did was select an account type from the Account Type drop-down shown at the top of the screen. Next, you need to enter a name for the account into the Account Name text box. For now, skip the Subaccount of, Checkbox, and Dropdown as we will discuss creating subaccounts momentarily and we will assume that the account created is not a subaccount of any other main account. The Account Description field is optional, as are the Bank Account Number, routing number, and tax line mapping fields. When finished, click the Save and Close button to create the new account and close the New Account window. Alternately, you may continue creating new accounts without having to close and reopen the New Account window by clicking the Save and New button instead. Doing this will create the account and clear the New Account window, but leave it open so you can continue creating accounts. If you choose to do this, note that this time you will need to select the appropriate account type for the next account to create from the account type drop-down at the top of the window. Also note that you can click the Cancel button in this window to close the new account window without creating a new account if needed. To create an account that had a balance as of the start date of the company file, click the Enter Opening Balance button. This will open the Enter Opening Balance window where you can enter the amount as of the start date of your company file into the Statement Ending Balance field. Then select the Statement Date, which must be either before or as of the start date of the company file from the Statement Ending Date Calendar selector. Then click the OK button to save the account's opening balance. The amounts entered here are attributed to the opening balance equity account in the chart of accounts. For accounts created after the company file start date, you simply create the account and enter the transactions that show from where the new account received its initial funds. When creating accounts, you will not need to use the opening balance field again after entering your beginning account balances when starting your company file. You can also create sub-accounts of accounts already created within the chart of accounts. This allows you to attribute transaction amounts to specific sub-accounts of a primary account for reporting purposes. For example, if you had an automobile expense account, you could create sub-accounts for gas as well as maintenance and repairs to easily show within a report the different amounts spent on gas versus repairs and maintenance for company vehicles, as well as the total amount spent on automobile expenses. 
The balance of any main account that has subaccounts is the total of all transactions attributed to the main account, including all balances within its subaccounts. You create a subaccount in the same way that you create any other account within the chart of accounts. However, first ensure that you have created the main account for which you want to create a subaccount. The only difference when creating a subaccount versus a primary account is that you must check the subaccount of checkbox. After checking the subaccount of checkbox, then choose its primary account from the adjacent drop down menu. Subaccounts must also be of the exact same account type as their parent accounts. To edit an account, select the account to edit within the chart of accounts. Then click the account button in the lower left corner of the list and choose the edit account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Alternately, you may also right click the account to edit within the chart of accounts window and then choose the edit account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Either way, you will then see the edit account window appear. Edit the account information in this window and then click the save and close button to save your changes and close the window. You may have accounts you never use listed within your chart of accounts. If you have an account that you would like to delete from your chart of accounts, you may do so only if there are no transactions associated with the account. After there are transactions assigned to an account, you can no longer delete it as that would compromise your company's financial information. In that case, you first need to remove the transactions from the account either by reassigning each transaction in the account to other accounts or by deleting them entirely if they are incorrect. However, this may not be feasible for your situation. After there are no transactions in the account, then you can delete it. To delete an empty account in the chart of accounts, select the account and then click the account button in the lower left corner of the chart of accounts window. Choose delete account from the pop-up menu that appears. After selecting the delete command, you will need to click OK in the message box that appears to permanently delete the account. If you have an account that you used at one time in the past but no longer actively use, you can inactivate it to hide it since you cannot delete it. When an account is inactivated, it will not appear by default in your chart of accounts. However, the account information is retained for reporting in QuickBooks. You can actually make items in almost all of your lists inactive to hide items you no longer use. In the chart of accounts, you can inactivate an account by selecting the name of the account to inactivate, clicking the account button in the lower left corner of the list window, and then choosing make account inactive from the pop-up menu. Inactivating list items will be covered in depth in Lesson 3.8. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.